don't listen up! One day, our sun will cool down and turn into a white dwarf. But this is not the worst thing for Earth. Before the star cools down, it will grow to an incredible size and arrange Ragnarok for us. Now, in case you don't know, Ragnarok is the fire apocalypse from Nordic mythology. So our star will burn down absolutely everything on our planet. But hey, don't worry, there's good news. This one day will come in 5 to 7 billion years. The bad news, though, is that almost all complex life on Earth will become extinct much sooner, maybe in a quarter of a billion years. But there's a small chance that our planet will be ruled by octopuses. Yeah, I know, this is too much news for the first few seconds. So let me break it all down for you, one thing at a time. We all hear about people destroying nature and polluting our planet. This is all true, but even without our intervention, the vast majority of living creatures on the planet will disappear, including ourselves. The reason is natural disasters and weather change. It sounds terrible, but it's not new to Earth. Scientists have found out that there have already been five mass extinctions. The last one happened about 65 million years ago, when dinosaurs disappeared. But life won anyway and took on many different forms. The sixth apocalypse may occur within the next 250 million years. Conditions on Earth at this time will be unsuitable for mammals because the level of carbon dioxide will be twice as high. This will happen because the sun will release 2.5% more radiation and it'll get too hot on Earth. The temperature in most parts of the planet will reach between 104 to 158 degrees Fahrenheit and the entire land will turn into one supercontinent. In regions with high humidity, the temperature will be even higher, and of course, under such conditions, it will be difficult for people to walk in the park and play frisbee with dogs. No one will play with anyone at all. Let's hope we'll have colonized other planets by this time. Increasing solar fluxes will lead to a sharp loss of oxygen in the atmosphere. This means that in about a billion years, our Earth will look like the lifeless place it was about 2.5 billion years ago. That is, before the Great Oxidation event. At that time, the air was filled with methane, carbon dioxide, and other gases. And the planet was inhabited by the simplest bacteria. Some of them learned how to make oxygen from sunlight and carbon dioxide. Throughout billions of years, they made so much oxygen that it became enough for the birth of new, more complex forms of life. And it seems we will return to these prehistoric times. Now, humans can't exist in such conditions, but some complex life forms hiding in the dark depths of the ocean might be able to adapt to the changed atmosphere and become the masters of Earth. These complex life forms are octopuses. There are many species of these animals. Some live in coastal areas, while others dwell in the deep waters of seas and oceans. And some species may be able to survive and create a new civilization. But why octopuses? Because they're some of the most intelligent creatures on Earth, and probably the most intelligent creatures among all the inhabitants of the dark depths. Octopuses can use surrounding objects as tools. For example, they can wear a coconut shell for protection or shelter. In laboratories, they've used various objects to complete mazes. These animals often escape from their water tanks to visit octopuses in nearby tanks. Yes, they have high intelligence, but not in the human sense. Their intelligence is more like a computer. You see, octopuses have neurons not only inside their brains, but also inside their eight tentacles and large eyes. It's like a big data center, and their limbs sense the environment in exceptional detail, as if they were the brain. Not only their intelligence, but also their physiological properties might help the octopus survive if the apocalypse strikes. Its body has no skeleton. It can squeeze through any hole, slip past any obstacle, and their eight highly developed limbs allow them to intelligently interact with their surroundings. Crows can bend pieces of wire with their beaks. They can throw stones into the water to raise the water level and get food. But they only have one beak. An octopus with its tentacles has at least eight times more possibilities. 
They don't have spines, so they'll most likely build a civilization not on land but underwater, where it's much more convenient to move with such a body. To build a civilization, they'll need to find cheap energy. For example, hydrothermal underwater springs or tides in coastal areas. This will be a difficult task, but it won't be the most challenging thing for creating cities. It's very difficult for them to maintain social connections. By their nature, they are loners, who usually form groups of several individuals. But this is not enough to carry out large-scale construction of underwater urban areas. Parents pass on culture, history, upbringing, and moral guidelines to their children. They spend a lot of time and effort on education. Octopuses don't do this at all. The female octopus passes away shortly after laying eggs. The male octopus has only one mating relationship in its entire life and passes away shortly after the female is fertilized. So, in a sense, octopus cubs are born orphans. It's not surprising that it's difficult for them to build social connections. Over the past 50 to 100 million years, octopuses have not developed a collective feeling. And it's difficult to imagine that it will suddenly appear in the future. Perhaps something will encourage them. <laughs> who knows? Some scientists who study octopuses have noticed that, over the past 10 years, some octopus species have shown certain social skills. Some live in groups of 10 or more individuals. If humanity doesn't ruin the lives of these animals by fishing and dumping garbage into the ocean, then they have a good chance of succeeding in conquering the planet. But if they fail, then the next candidates might be nematodes, those little white worms. Well, let's hope octopuses win. They seem cuter. They also may achieve a technological breakthrough much faster than we think. Because when you have eight arms, you work much better. Imagine these octopuses leaving Earth and flying to another galaxy, where they meet us humans. Do you think we could become friends? So let's say octopuses become a highly developed civilization that builds cities in the oceans. But they, just like humans, will have to think about colonizing other planets because of the upcoming Ragnarok. The sun keeps heating up and getting bigger, don't forget. Our star is currently in the most stable phase of its life. It has been in this phase for the last 4.5 billion years. But after another 5 billion years or so, the hydrogen in its core will start running out, and then the fun will begin. As hydrogen fusion slows, the core begins to contract. As the core gets smaller, it heats up until it can kick off another round of nuclear reactions, fusing helium into heavier elements such as carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Eventually, the sun will turn red and be so gigantic that it will swallow up Mercury, Venus, and possibly Earth. So, it may be Ragnarok not only for our planet, but for the whole solar system. No matter how tough octopuses are, they won't survive such a disaster. Earth is likely to burn down completely. Maybe it'll look like the moon, or it'll completely disappear. What will happen to the sun next? Its energy will run out sooner or later. Then it will shrink to the size of Earth and turn into a white dwarf. When a star goes out, it ejects a huge amount of gas and dust. Only the cooling core remains. All those outer layers will be floating in space, forming a beautiful nebula, and our solar system will become unrecognizable. Well, in some ways, it can sound pretty sad and scary. But hey, look at the bright side. Yeah, pun intended. It's going to happen in 5 to 7 billion years. So relax. Humanity has been living on Earth for about 40,000 years. If we compress the entire history of our planet into one 24-hour day, then the history of people will be equal to one second. If we achieve such a development in 40,000 years, what'll happen in 100,000 years, in a million years, in a billion years? It's hard to predict. So how about going to the park and enjoying the sun at its best? Uh, yeah, bring some sunscreen. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.